Tonight, we'll be talking about our country's great divide. Are Americans ready to call it quits? The Washington Post's Robert Kagan recently published an essay called Our Constitutional Crisis is Already Here. Kagan argues that America is set up for the greatest political and constitutional crisis since the Civil War. We often talk about red America and blue America, but the idea of two actual Americas seems beyond the pale. To actually carry out this idea of two Americas, firstly, would pose incredible difficulties. Even in the secession of 1860 and 1861, there were states connected to each other. However, today, blue states are not connected. By and large, red America is fairly connected, perhaps except for Alaska. Never Trumper David French, formerly at National Review, fancies himself as more of a healer, more of a peacemaker. He recently wrote that many Americans are in agreement on issues. He even promotes his book in his article, it's called Divided We Fall and came out a year ago. And in it, he presents a simple argument that America's strongest social, political, and cultural forces were driving America apart. And that if we did not arrest the trend and address the culture of grievance that animates our politics, the future unity of the nation could not be guaranteed, he says. He believes most Americans actually do agree on issues and it's just social media that polarizes people. He writes, quote, the combination of malice and misinformation is driving American polarization to a fever pitch. While social media has its own set of problems, I agree. I disagree with the idea that there isn't a huge divide between left and right. The reality is there is a massive divide. And while social media may add insult to injury and be a bit more spicy than a face-to-face -face conversation might be, how polarized, one might say, people are on social media is also a symptom of how people truly feel. That is, if you haven't been banned from social media. The divide is real. Some say that Donald Trump is what caused the divide, but that's simply not true. Obama was one of the left's most radical presidents, so naturally, there was pushback against that and the pendulum swung the other way. One might argue that political figures like AOC are perhaps making more on the left moved left. I'm not sure, but maybe. But let's look back. Wait, she was elected in the first place and rose to prominence because of radical leftists who supported her and put her there to begin with. The ideas produced her, not the other way around. If the radical left wasn't already a contingency, she would not have been elected or been able to win her primary against a left-wing but more moderate Democrat Joseph Crowley. AOC rose up through the ranks by working for progressive Bernie Sanders. She paints herself as more of a waitress, but the reality is she was seasoned politically, particularly in political organizing, and knew what she needed to do to win. So these things don't just happen out of nowhere. Let's remember that. And similarly, with someone like Lauren Boebert or Marjorie Taylor Greene, they rose to prominence because groups like Bikers for Trump and others supported them, and they represent the ideas of the people who vote for them too. Let's look at this recent study from University of Virginia. Project Homefire, in conjunction with Innovate MR, a market research firm, conducted this study, including thousands of voters, half of whom voted for Trump and half who voted for Biden. 80% of Biden voters and 84% of Trump voters agreed with the statement that elected officials in the opposing party present, quote, a clear and present danger to American democracy. Honestly, this is not surprising. I wasn't polled, but I believe this to be true as well. Polling found that 56% of Biden voters agreed with the statement, quote, there's no real difference between Republicans and fascists, while 75% of Trump voters agreed with the same statement about Democrats and socialists. I think a key reason why so many Republicans think of Democrats as socialists is because some Democrats actually call themselves socialists and defend democratic socialism. The Center for Politics director Larry Sabato says, quote, the divide between Trump and Biden voters is deep, wide, and dangerous. The scope is unprecedented and it will not easily be fixed. In the past, the two parties agreed on goals, but disagreed on means. But today, we disagree on goals, so it's nearly impossible to even discuss means since they don't want to live in our America and we don't want to live in theirs. People like David French who want to build a bridge have to begin by acknowledging the problem itself rather than denying it and the hard facts. 
the two sides are like a tug of war pulling in opposite directions. While the idea of unity sounds nice, the reality is that when Joe Biden says that, he means Republicans joining Democrats, not the other way around. If anything, the left views any compromise with the right to be a bad thing. We've seen Senators Manchin and Cinema hounded endlessly, even with left-wingers following Cinema and recording her as she goes to a restroom. This is all because Manchin and Cinema don't always tow the left's party line. This is outrageous to the majority of Democrat representatives, so that's why they resort to these shakedown tactics that even Biden doesn't condemn. He says, quote, it happens to everybody, and quote, it's part of the process. Watch. I don't think they're appropriate tactics, but it happens to everybody. From the, <laughs> the only people it doesn't happen to are people who have Secret Service standing around them. Um, so uh, it's, it's, it's part of the process. Both sides believe the other side is pursuing an agenda that is contrary to their values. True. And both sides believe that they will suffer personally if the other side has their way. Well, this could not be more true, especially when it comes to vaccine mandates. If the left has their way, which they are right now, depending on where you live and work, you're largely being forced to either get a vaccine or be fired, move schools, move jobs. In New York City, you cannot enter a restaurant without a vaccine passport. Of course, travel without a vaccine is another issue. So you're basically a second-class citizen without the vaccine, all because the left is in charge. That's a fact. And so to ignore this reality, as David French does, is silly. It's pie in the sky. We are already living in two Americas. Nearly 90% of voters on both sides believe that they will no longer belong in America if the other side has its way, with more than one in five saying they agree completely that that is the case. And this has bled into families, this has bled into friendships. At least 75% of Democrats and Republicans say that, quote, Americans who support the opposing party have become a clear and present danger to the American way of life. You know, it's sad that we live in an America that has moved further and further to the left since this country started. It's sad that we live in a country where the left is so radical. When hearing this data, it may seem like both sides are radical and divided. But the reality is that what's considered center has moved so far to the left that just by using common sense and facts, that makes you now a conservative. Because common sense is so uncommon. And I think a big reason people on the right are so opposed to the left is because the left has become a runaway train. There is no telling where they will stop. And the reality is they will never stop moving to the left. It's only a question of how close, how far they can take us down the road of socialism. And that's why hardworking families are hellbent on stopping that from happening. Because many of us know that once our country is too far down that road, there's no turning back. And the price that will be paid, the country that will truly be lost at that point, will be devastating. So while everyone being center is a nice concept for David French, it's not rooted in any idea of what center actually means. And I don't think the solution is for us to become radical leftists as well, or to become centrist just to close this divide, but rather to convince people to join our side and to talk about our values and to fight for them. America depends on us. One area in which most Americans do agree is political correctness. Most Americans are against it and are tired of it. That's right, people on both sides of the aisle. I couldn't agree more, it's absurd. Listen to what happened to ESPN anchor Sage Steele. She said of the COVID-19 vaccine that she respects an individual's decision to get the vaccine, but to mandate it is sick and it's scary to me, she says. She also expressed how tired she is of the race mantra. As a mixed race, half black, half white woman, she said that she questioned Obama's decision to identify as black. She said, quote, well, congratulations to the president. That's his thing. I think that's fascinating considering his black dad was nowhere to be found, but his white mom and grandma raised him. But hey, you do you, I'm going to do me, she says. The ironic thing about her getting suspended for saying this is that her words aren't a per opinion. They're literally true. Obama is half black, half white, and he was abandoned by his black father and raised by his white mother. Pick up his book, Dreams From My Father, or read a biography about Obama, and you'll see this for yourself as well. 
As Steele was suspended, ESPN claimed they were, quote, having direct conversations with Sage, and those conversations will remain private. Steele, however, has since apologized for these comments, sadly, saying, quote, I know my recent comments created controversy for the company, and I apologize. How sad. One has to apologize for merely having an opinion or stating a fact. And she said these things actually not on ESPN at her job, but during a podcast interview she did. Ironically, even in that same podcast interview, she said, quote, But I have a job, a job that I love, and frankly, a job that I need. I don't know what comes next, but I do know for me personally, I feel, I feel like defeated, she says. So this foreshadows her fear of losing her job, honestly. And I think many Americans fear that as well. Whether you're losing your job due to political correctness or not getting the vaccine or whatever it is. NPR even came out with a recent article titled, quote, faced with losing their jobs, even the most hesitant are getting vaccinated. As if that's a good thing, as if it's a good thing that people are being threatened and doing this out of fear, 